060973, as ever, is the number you need to call. And you can watch us on Global Player as well. Uh, our first, I was going to say victim, but I don't mean, I don't really mean that. Uh, our first contestant is Grant Shapps. Uh, he is the Conservative MP for Well in Hatfield and the Secretary of State for Transport. Um, Grant, welcome. First of all, why did you decide to run? Well, I think that this country is remarkable. I think that there's um, so much uh, in our future that could make it better still. Our best days are ahead, to say, to say the least. But I think that we need a number of things to get there. We, we need to uh, be really competent in the way that the government is run, clearly. And I felt I had that experience from what I've been doing at the Department for Transport, which is not a department which is always easy for previous secretaries of state. Uh, I thought... Well, it hasn't that, been that easy for you, has well, it? I mean, look, you're always going to have problems. The, the difficulty of the department before, it was it was the department that was in the news, not the issues, which are, of course, you know, being very complex over things like uh, COVID and the rest. But the department's been competently run. Uh, and then I uh, think the very important thing is that... Uh, People have the ability, whoever is the Prime Minister, to communicate a simple message which people can understand and appreciate because it doesn't change in a couple of days. So I think that continuing process. And then lastly, direct to my colleagues in Parliament, the uh, electorate, if you were, for the moment, um, we need to better win. And I'm a proven campaigner. I won in the 2015. I was a big part of that uh, process when I was party chairman. Uh, we uh, had 100,000 people out on the streets. We would deploy 100 people to 100 constituencies at the same time on the same day and do it multiply. The point is, we need a campaigner, we need a communicator, and we need to make sure that we are uh, delivering every single day. And I felt I had But this. given it's what's good. happened over the past week over the past few months, actually, surely a lot of the Conservative Party will be thinking, well, we need a new broom. And Grant Shapps has had his fingers dipped in the Johnson blood. And you didn't resign. I don't think you offered to resign, did you? Why, no, why was that? because I'm uh, loyal, uh, because I believe in public service. Um, Her Majesty appoints 22 principal secretaries of state, uh, and you have legal duties uh, to discharge. Well, so did all the other ones that, that resigned. Uh, okay, uh, but as far as I was concerned, uh, at a time when uh, we have uh, disruption on our railways, which strikes more call today, at a time when uh, airports, which we don't run, but of course have a very considerable interest in making sure that the transport is smooth, uh, are having a difficult time. I didn't think it would help. I didn't feel it was a question of public duty. Did you tell the Prime Minister away. you should resign? I went to see the Prime Minister... Uh, in advance the night before he he resigned to say look you won't win uh, another confidence vote um so there isn't a, a route through this um and he didn't indeed take uh, my advice or that advice and other people's advice no doubt and he did resign the next day but i look but did, I, did you say to him if you don't resign by such and such a time on thursday i will have to go no Okay, because that, it, that does contrast you with one or two others, doesn't well, it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I believe in public service. I believe in uh, collective responsibility, which is why I've been many times on your show and others defending, even in difficult times, some difficult choices we had to make through coronavirus and, and, and much else. Um, I don't think I make too much secret when, when you know, there are things which are... Uh, that, that I uh, you know, think should move in a different direction. But nonetheless, I believe in a collective responsibility. Give, I don't give, believe give me an occasion when you've done that, when, when you sat around the cabinet table yeah. and you've heard one of your colleagues announce a new policy that they're going to make public. Give me an occasion where you sort of raised your hand and said, oh, I'm not so sure about I, this I, I'm not going to do that. I, exciting as it would be for your listeners, because that would break the principle of collective responsibility. And uh, others may brief, I don't. I get on with the job. Head down. I've been in the department. I but run the, it competently. But this government is, is effectively over. So I, I don't see that you're betraying any confidence. Well, so is it, if you say, well, actually, I mean, we've had plenty of your your rivals do this over the last few days, saying, well, like Liz, no, well, Liz Trust, for example, didn't agree with the next rise. Yeah, look, fine, but I'm not going to do that. What I will tell you about is what my plan is, and you might be able to, out of that, to do some areas where uh, collective responsibility may, may, may meant that I had to, uh, in the shorter term, uh, agree to a budget or whatever else where I have different priorities and we can talk about that but I'm certainly not going to disclose private conversations around the cabinet table I don't think people should 
Um, Conservative Home, they do their, these surveys of uh, the popularity mm. of leaders. They've just brought out another one, just been published in the last few minutes. Now, on the on the Guido Fawkes spreadsheet of MP supporters, you've got the fewest of all of the candidates apart from Raymond Shishti. I think you've got seven at the moment, unless you want to update us on that. Um, but according to this survey, Penny Mordaunt leads Kemi Badenoch by under 10 votes in over 800 people that voted. So Penny Mordaunt, number one, Kemi Badenoch, number two, Rishi Sunak, number three, and Suella Braverman, number four. You're second last. Now, you can't win, can you? Well, look, I, I, first of all, um, it is up for uh, members of parliament and then, of course, members of the party uh, to make these decisions. Surveys are all very interesting. But they are members well, of the Well, I was just going to say, if you'd read that survey last week, it told you that Ben Wallace would win. Uh, if you read it six months ago or a few months ago, it would have told you Rishi Sunak was, was you know, way up at the top. These things come and go. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a policy, but, you, but the real votes are the that matter. your electorate here... Yeah. It's not us, the voters. It's your fellow That's right. MPs. It's electorate, almost. Yeah, it is a yeah. electorate. So you've got to get your message over to them, really, in the next three or four days, because the 22 committee, they're announcing the timetable for the whole uh, election in a, in a few minutes' time. It's likely there'll be one or two ballots this week. That's right. You, yeah. You've got to get up that league table a bit. How are you going to well, do that? Right, but the league table won't be uh, 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 you know, members. It will be because that will be two who will go out to that. It will, be, MPs, it will be members. MPs of, will be looking at it'll that. It will be members of parliament. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, look, uh, first of all, uh, I believe that um, what MPs really are thinking about and what care about uh, is, of course, uh, what happens in the next election. I've written to MPs today. I think you might have the letter in front I, of me. I actually. do have the letter in front of me. It's, it, it's not a leadership letter, is it? It's almost an application to be party chairman I again. certainly have no intention or desire to ever be party chairman again, <laughs> but it's kind of well, you to, I mean, to, it's, to, all, to it's all about campaigning. It's all about what you will do to well, help MPs win their well, seats, remember there which are, is important, but I'd yes. say that's not the job of a prime but minister. Remember that's there the are, job of a party Remember chairman. there are two points in this contest, and the first is we're electing a new leader of the Conservative Party. The second is we're electing a prime minister. Now, I've already outlined the day before that letter a very uh, a clear program for some of my early priorities when it comes to um, the, uh, the country, what I'd want to do with it, how we would want to bring in an emergency budget, uh, what I would want to do with reducing taxes, lowering barriers. I've already done that. This today was to uh, talk to my colleagues about what we need to do to win their seats, something that I've been involved with before. By the way, before the 20, I just that interesting actually having that previous conversation. Before the 2015 election, I would be on with many different commentators. I had Andrew Neil classically because he always had his own graph or chart to show me on his program, and he would be showing me why it was technically impossible for us to win the 2015 election, and we won the 2015 election. So I just think think that actually uh, what we need to do is allow the process uh, to to. to Given the circumstances of this leadership election and that the Prime Minister effectively resigned over integrity and ethics and truth-telling, um, it, it's quite surprising to me that so far none of the candidates have really uh, highlighted that. You, we've been going now for 12 minutes. You haven't mentioned trust, integrity or ethics. Are these words no longer associated with the Conservative Party? No, I think, I mean, I think they absolutely have to be at the heart of everything we do. I mean, but you understand that's why we're sitting here having this conversation? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm here having the conversation um, because I think it's right that people get to question somebody who uh, would like to be the leader of the country. Uh, it's simple as that. But what can you do as a new sort of fresh broom, if that's the right expression, a new leader of the party, what can you do to restore people's trust in not just the Conservative Party, mm. but the whole political system. So I think the most important thing to do is say what you plan to do and then stick to that thing. So, you know, rather than having a, a policy which goes out, falls apart, is changed a few days uh, later, points in one direction and then another, people will respect it, even when they don't agree with the policy, if, if you're able to actually uh, stick to your plan and your principles. And that is what a Shap's administration would do. And what about tax cuts? Because that seems to be the answer that, with the exception of Rishi Sunak, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of the candidates say, well, the answer to the cost of living crisis is to cut people's taxes. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are going to think, well, OK, if we've got a growing economy, you can, there, there's obviously a case for low taxes. Most Conservatives believe in low taxes. 
But the scale of the tax cuts being offered by some of your colleagues is massive. What, what's your offer? Yeah, so, so mine is, frankly, more moderate, uh, probably somewhere in between those two extremes of not doing anything, which I don't think uh, is, uh, is the right plan for this moment, simply because, uh, you know, people are feeling the squeeze. We can show people that we understand that. Tax is a very quick way to get money into people's pockets. It happens immediately. Uh, other uh, reforms will take longer, and we need to do those things too, reforming the the, the, the economy uh, in other ways, cutting the red tape and so on and so forth. So I think tax has its uh, uses, um, but I, I, I don't think the extremes of, you know, to hell with the debt and the deficit will just let that rip. I don't think that works. Uh, but nor do I think uh, doing nothing shows us... In terms of, of specifics, of what's the yeah, one Yeah, so I take the, the, the... There's a tax cut next year coming up in 2023, which takes income tax on the basic rate from 20p to 19p. I would do that in an emergency budget, which I would have immediately. Uh, and then I will follow that with a, um, if you like, a fiscal star chamber. I would look at spending across all of government. Uh, and I'd look to make reductions across government in order to ensure that although we're reducing taxes... In including the health in, service? Well, certainly including departments like mine, for example. At, including at the health service? I would long have a good close look at the health service, but I'm not saying... Uh, I know some... You see, people will hear that and they will hear he's going to cut spending on health. No, well, they shouldn't, because let me finish the sentence and they won't be confused, <laughs> Ian. That's the best thing. Um, look, first of all, um, the, some candidates I know have come out and said, look, we'll have 20% across the board. Everyone, sorry, guys. That's not the approach I'm taking. What I'm saying is we'll have a fiscal star chamber and we'll look at all of the £1.2 trillion pounds that the government spends of your money uh, each year. And I'd be very surprised uh, if there are not a few billion that can be saved in order to fund... What would you cut from your transport budget? I would take East-West Rail and I would so remove... Why have you done it already? Uh, well, I haven't had the opportunity to well, be you're the transport total. secretary. You could have easily done it already. You could have gone to Rishi Sunak and say, I know you want to cut spending. Here's one way you well, can I, do it. I, I've done that in other ways, but you just asked me a question what I would do as Prime Minister, and I'm telling you. I would cut East-West Rail uh, on what's called uh, two and three, so this is the second and third... Uh, tranches of it, it would say three to five million pounds straight away. Not HS2, though. Well, the thing about HS2 is it is really genuinely being built. So cutting it now would leave uh, massive tunnels under large parts, Are of, you uh, parts of the country. Are you committed to uh, net zero, the 2050 targets? Yes, I do think we have to get to net zero, but I don't think that means that we need to sort of be hair shirt uh, about it. There are many benefits in this new technology, including, for example, when it comes to electric cars, uh, the cost of petrol, uh, as it is, can save money. Now, there are problems because you still have to get over the fact there isn't a big second-hand market. There's still more expensive to buy, though that differential is coming down. There's got to be the infrastructure to charge. I've doubled the number of on-street parking. Don't get me started Charging. on, on, I the, double, on I that I double that. We're going to times it by 10. <laughs> we're going to 10x it. So, you know, um, we're Right, we're going to go to uh, some calls in a moment. 0345 973 if you would like to put your questions to Grant Chaps, one of the 11 so far declared leadership candidates for the Conservative Party. It's 18 minutes past seven. This is LBC. In Dale, text 84850. This is LBC. 
It's 90 minutes past seven on LBC. Grant Shapps is with us taking your calls. Let's go to the first call. It's Michael in Stanwell. Hello, Michael. Hello, Ian. How are you? Hi, very well, thank you. What would you like to ask? Good stuff. Yeah, I, I just want to ask Graham, how, how does he think, or how does he think the public view, uh, any candidate that voted in favour, that you know, the, the eyes, um, when it came to the Owen Patterson uh, reform, um, how can they be taken seriously, that, that they actually um, represent democracy and, and stuff like that, when it was only 13 Conservative MPs that voted against that? Um, mm. Does he... Does, does he think that the 13 that voted against it, they, they shouldn't be in government and, and they were wrong? No, I don't, actually. I mean, so then the reason for that is that, um, you know, when you vote on that sort of House business, that's the procedures of the House, um, then, then you are entitled to, to go off and vote as you like. So it's not a, a whipping issue, but I think I, I feel I'm dodging your question. Um, clearly, it was a mistake to uh, try to put that uh, um, pass some vote through. And, uh, and you know, Did you feel pressured up. to vote? In not, not, not especially, because actually one of the, the, the missing bit of all of this was there have been recommendations made about the need to change the way that the uh, committee system was working on this, because there was no system of appeals, which any natural justice system would, would have. So it was a genuine in problem to resolve but I mean uh, you know you're not I'm not going to sit here and, and, and defend it being brought all into to one thing it was in many ways the start of the problems which then engulfed the uh, the, the, the Boris because in a way that that started did. the whole thing didn't it did it? that night yeah and I mean if, if all if the Owen Patterson thing hadn't happened I wonder whether we would be I, sitting I, here I, 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 sus I suspect we possibly would have been still I think there would have been enough unrelated um, things which which caused okay Michael I suspect you weren't expecting that answer a quick response oh well no well I'm just um, I want to know what he thinks about the 13 people that voted against it uh, well, he, well he told you he... no 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 but I'm saying does he think that them uh, you know morally they, they were wrong or, or no. does he no he doesn't he but think that they they, they were right in, in voting against well, I, 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 I think it was fine for them to take a judgment on it actually um the point about it is that it was when you're voting about house business so this is business which means that sort of procedures in the house and what have you um that is usually a vote of your own conscience I mean, what what system do you think should be in place um and there is an issue that needed resolving uh, i think that the way that it was proposed was clumsy uh, and uh, you know i've got I, absolutely no reason at all why those people shouldn't you know they, they for perfectly entitled to come to their own, own decision and by the way why shouldn't people come to their own decisions i mean that's why we elect mps okay michael thank you uh Shuris is in ilford hi Shuris. what would you like to ask so hi yes so I'm, i've just been hearing every time they'll be cutting spending cutting this and that I'm, I'm a computer science teacher i'm just wondering is there any possibility that they can actually help us because again, again as a young person I'm not getting any help after pay extra taxes because of student finance and everything. I want to buy my own house, but yeah, I'm just seeing no support at all. I'm just mm. caring about cuts in public sector. Yeah. Well, so part, part of the help that you want would be coming um, and under me uh, immediately because you'd immediately be keeping more of your salary. Um, so that that is an important cut. And by the way, just uh, unrelated to this leadership contest, um, th there's, a, there's a cut this month. Uh, if uh, it, it, because your your national insurance rate is going up to twelve and a half thousand pounds, it's worth about three hundred and fifty pounds a year to you. So, th what what we're in fact all proposing, I think, bar one candidate, will in fact produce a moderate saving for everybody. Somebody on thirty thousand pounds would be about one hundred and seventy five thousand, one hundred and seventy five pounds rather a year better off. It's only a, a, a small part of it. I suspect you are asking about the public spending side of it. Look, I, I'm I'm all in favour of great public services. I just think there has to be... They've got to be funded, though. They've got to be funded, they? right. And we, last year, during coronavirus, we spent, I think, 52% of all of the nation's income, GDP, on, um, on uh, spent by the public purse. And that's not a well-balanced economy. Even Gordon Brown used to say you shouldn't go over no, but 40%. That, but, but there was COVID. Of course. So we recognise... But we need that, to get that, back that, to the pre-COVID you know, levels, and that well, is what I'm proposing. Maybe, but the, what's coming through from most of the candidates is that, well, yeah, we want these big tax cuts or moderate tax cuts or some tax cuts and the way that we're going to fund them is we're going to cut the cost of government well 
all politicians always say there'll be efficiency savings. Yes. And, and there, there will not be just efficiency the... savings. But when you're talking about cuts of the likes of 20% in some departmental budgets, which one of the candidates, yeah. in fact, we're going to be having him on tomorrow morning, Good. tomorrow evening. No, I was going to say, ask him about that, because um, that's not my I mean, policy. He, he will say, well, well, I'm just talking about the headcount in departments. <laughs> okay, well, that, but yeah. I mean, you can't cut yeah. health spending, you can't cut education yeah. spending by 20%, can you? Yeah. No, that's right. Uh, and, and I was going to say, that's not my policy, the 20%. So, uh, you know, that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I am, what I do believe, though, is in an economy, as I mentioned before, where we, you know we spend 1.2 trillion pounds of taxpayer money from the centre, uh, there must be the ability to shave some money off that, and uh, that's why I have this fiscal star chamber, and we will look at different ways of doing it, and it won't just be a smaller civil service, though I do support reducing it by about 90,000 um, posts. It won't just be that. It will also be looking at the way that government itself runs, looking at the way we deliver services. And by the way, in many occasions, we'll do that and give better services. So but we've we had don't all use... of this ever since 2010. Francis Maud used to do this when he was cabinet. But you've got to carry on doing it. That's the Come point. up with all sorts of you've different groups it. of people who would say, well, we can make efficiency savings here uh, and, and there. But we're, tw we're 12 years on That's from right. 2010. I think, I think, if I remember right, Rightly, he got to about £10 billion pounds a year in, in savings. But as you say, we're now a long time, 12 years on, 10 mm. years on since he reported on it. And other inefficiencies will have come about. Plus, new technology is not being used as it should be to ensure that people are able to get access to services from government, uh, which sometimes are still operating through the postal service. Uh, yeah. Sure, thank you for that. Let's move on to Mel in Wharton in Lancashire. Uh, Mel, hello. What would you like to ask? Hi, I'd just like to ask, a lot of your uh, fellow candidates for this position have uh, made some very public statements about not necessarily supporting the rights of trans people as they stand right now. What will you do as Prime Minister to support the rights of trans people to enshrine the current uh, further into law and to make sure that the current moral panic that we're going through isn't going to affect what I can and cannot do on the street every day? Mm. Well, look, first of all, I respect the rights of everyone and uh, a Shap's administration, a Shap's government would be absolutely start from that, that, that point. Uh, everyone has, uh, you know, the same rights in this country as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'd say there's a biological um, uh, difference uh, in sexes, uh, but if somebody chooses to transition, that is their choice entirely. I absolutely respect What, what if they right? don't choose to transition but still class themselves as the opposite sex to the one that they were born into. Well, it, well uh, look, I, I think there is a biological uh, male-female issue here, and I think it's very important that um, uh, you know there are safe spaces, uh, particularly for, for women, where they don't feel that um, someone could just say, oh, "Well, hello, now I'm uh, you know somebody from the the opposite sex." But what I was going to say most of all, though, I think you know you've got a sort of love and appreciation of everyone. I'm uh, you know socially liberal and eco economically liberal as it happens I say you know people should be well, live and let if you're socially live. liberal and economically liberal why do you join the liberal democrats because <laughs> they're not <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably but the, the main thing I say is you look if you're looking for a prime minister who's a great sort of crusader in the in the culture uh, wars that is not me I'm afraid I'll be focusing on bread and butter issues I don't want to be living in a country where we, we obsess about these and become like the United States where it becomes this sort of great dividing line in society live and let live that would be my message and support everybody but one or two of your fellow candidates do not take that view well they? people are welcome to take whatever view i look i think it's very important that you know women can go into changing rooms and it's not just that somebody today but it isn't know. isn't that whenever i ask people how many people how many women have uh, been abused or assaulted in a changing room by a trans Woman. Well, you're sort of, and, and nobody can ever no, come up you're with any of, answer at all. You're sort of supporting my point, which is I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of your listeners, having heard that I, you know, live and let live and let people get on with their own lives and defend and you know, make sure that there are safe spaces, probably agree with me that issues relating to the cost of living squeeze, what's going on in the war in Europe, and much else in this country, including rail strikes, which we hear more about today from Aslef, are probably more important to most people's lives. Um, Mel, quick response. Uh, I, I, that's a very good point. I'd like you're focusing on bread and butter issues, but the thing that's most important to my life right now is the fact that every single toy is trying to take away my right to access public bathrooms, which is a brilliant end 
to the right okay. to access public spaces. But it's because, a very dodgy line, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there because we, 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 we've caught the gist of what you've said. Um, I, I'm going to ask you this because lots of people have texted in this. It won't be a surprise question to you, I wouldn't have thought. Sam in Redhill says, why should we trust someone who uses several fake identities? So <laughs> this the whole is Michael this Green is, thing. Oh, this, is, this is just like uh, as from 10 years ago. <laughs> These sort of labour slurs are still going on. But my actual business is a printing company that I started when I was 21. It's still going 32 years later. As a hobby, because I, I quite like new technology, I wrote um, some books and I wrote with a pen name, Michael Green, as you say, writing on the website. My name's Grant Shapps. I'm writing with a pen name because one day I'd like to go into public service. I wasn't even elected uh, at the time. And uh, years later, when I was party chairman, I, I kept it on my members' register just to make in case I had any income. Years later, uh, the, the Labour Party, oh, he's using this, you know, it, yeah, honestly, uh, it's extraordinary. Okay. <laughs> this is still even going on. I know it's a sort of easy thing. Oh, write this. Well, I mean, it's literally dozens, dozens of people but, but, on social media but, 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 when they knew we were doing yeah, this. Yeah, of course, because, so because, I've, because I've felt I had because to. the trolls are out there. But let me, let me just tell you this. When it comes to propriety and ethics, I, according to the expenses, uh, you know, remember doing the whole expenses scandal, according to the Telegraph, who, you know, did the authoritative thing on this, I was one of the very, very few who was an expenses saint. So if we want to talk about propriety and ethics and important things, fine. But if we want you to claim talk, to be a saint. That's quite uh, something. Expenses saint these, was quite... Day and age. I know, but, right. but, you know, you know, how many people write, have written with pen names? Elliot, you know... Uh, you know okay, you know, well, let's you know, go to another question. Uh, Robert's in Hammersmith. If you were successful... So, uh, sorry, it's a phone call, not a text. Robert, hello, go ahead and ask your own question. <laughs> uh, good evening, sir. Um, if you were successful and then became Prime Minister, would you compose your cabinet, uh, and I'm talking about junior as well as senior ministers, would you compose them of uh, looking to the majority of, being, of them being uh, Brexiteers, or would you look upon somebody as saying, well, he's, he could run that department, but the pity is he didn't vote? Uh, for Brexit. Uh, by the way, I am a Brexiteer. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know whether to disappoint you or not. I would simply compose it of the best people for the jobs. Do you want to give us a clue who one or two of those might be? No. <laughs> No, I wouldn't want to do that on air. But I would simply compose of the best people of the jobs. Look, I just think, you know, Brexit vote was six years ago now. Um, the country has Brexited. I, uh, you know, a Shap's administration uh, would not undo that. There'd be a little Brexit lock, if you like. Uh, absolutely using the Brexit freedoms. I just reduced everybody's car insurance by 50 quid a year or stopped it going up. Uh, because I left one of the uh, EU's provisions called VNUC. Uh, I've used many of the freedoms to solve problems in government, including when we had that Kent, sorry, not the Kent, the lorry crisis, the HGV crisis last year. And I, used, I introduced 33 measures. Many had a Brexit element or freedom to them. So I'm very, very comfortable and happy to use all of those things. Uh, I certainly won't be composing a, a cabinet based on um, you know, an event and of many, many It's years also ago. quite difficult given that Liz Truss, for example, voted Remain, and yet no one would think nowadays that she ever had done. But she was a Lib Dem, but no one would think that either. <laughs> That's a bit of a dig, wasn't no, it? Not really. Um, <laughs> statement, statement final question like from this. Don in Hendon, who says, "Will you keep the Rwanda plan?" Yes, I will. Um, uh, look, on what basis? On what basis? On what basis? Because we have pe people trackers, uh, travellers, bringing uh, crim criminal gangs, bringing um, very vulnerable people across the water, and some are dying. It's not something which we should just turn back on. This country has a very, very uh, open. Uh, welcoming arms to, um, to to refugees. In fact, I have some living in my house. I have three Ukrainians, three three generations of Ukrainians, and a dog living in my house. In my house, we were a very generous, open nation. Hundreds of thousand people have hundred thousand people have done that. But what we can't do is turn a blind eye to this people trafficking. And by having a backstop of don't bother because you're not going to come here you're going to actually be going this somewhere is, else. This is public very, punishing very people important. rather than the people traffickers, isn't it? Because it's not really a deterrent. If you say to people, you will definitely go to Rwanda if you make this journey, and, and then send everyone that does make the journey to Rwanda, I yes. can see that's a deterrent. It isn't a deterrent when you're sending 100 well, I, people. Well, well I, would, I would not only do it, I, I would not ever only have the policy, I would do it properly and make sure it happens. So it's not being done properly at the moment. Well, clearly, we, we're, we're stuck with the courts and the lawyers and all this, that and the other, aren't we? So it's not happening. But Who's fault that? The Home Secretary's? <laughs> it's the system's fault. I'm not going I, I like, to... I, like, I like the Home Secretary. I think she's, she's, she's actually been um, it's not pushing the against the system. It's the politician who, implement, who decides on the policy 
and then implements the system. You can't blame the system because it's a new system. Well, that's it. You said it. It's a new system. It has to be tested through the courts. We live in a democracy. I've got no problem with that. Um, but eventually, you have to shape the system to deliver the policy that you want. And right. unless you've got a better, or somebody's got, not you necessarily, but somebody's got a better idea how we stop these criminal gangs from operating, and look, we, we, we can't man every beach, we can't persuade the French to do that, it's impossible to turn people away halfway. We have legal asylum routes into this country, but we need to make clear that if you come here well, we illegally, don't, we don't actually, then do you we? don't. We yes, don't. We do. The yes, we do. The only way you would do that is if you had some sort of reception centre in Northern France which dealt no, with the No, 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 we do. We do. No, that's not true. We do have legal asylum routes into this country. How? And we brought tell, people, me how, tell me how okay, somebody... For example, we have IDP, uh, Displaced People's Camps, it, it, from in different parts of the world where we brought over thousands of... Uh, asylum seekers. We've done that from um, the situation in Syria, for example. So there are legal routes into the country. You can also turn up and claim asylum if you've travelled here in a legal manner. What we have to make clear is if it's illegal, okay. if you're using people tra traffickers, then this won't be your final I've destination. I've got a time-honoured fashion, quick-fire questions, yes or no answers. Uh, would you scrap the online harms bill? Uh, I would look at it in um, some detail. I haven't come to a conclusion on that. Scrap the BBC licence fee? No, I wouldn't, but I do recognise the BBC has to transition to a different way of paying because scrap this is... Scrap the Channel uh, 4 privatisation? Uh, it wouldn't be my first priority. Uh, so I'm taking that as a yes. So, 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 in other words, my first priority is not to privatise Channel 4. Uh, it is something I take a close Restore look at. Restore DFID as a separate department? No, I wouldn't. I was in DFID and I was also a Foreign Office Minister at the same time. I ludicrously would have in the same in, on the same evening from the two different departments uh, something asking me to spend, in one case, half a billion pounds uh, in a particular country and in another box asking me to lobby their Foreign Secretary uh, to give access to a British citizen. The two must be joined up. Your worst mistake? Um, I think probably not pushing back on that Michael Green stuff more from what you've said. If you drop out, who will you then support? Uh, I'm not intending to do that, and I haven't looked closely enough at the field. Say something nice about Mick Lynch. <laughs> no, I think actually he's probably a very nice uh, fellow. He just, we just need to modernise our railways, and I, I look forward to him helping to do that. Say something nice about Keir Starmer. Um, yeah, I, he, he tries his best. <laughs> uh, your karaoke song of choice. Um... I actually like Rapper's Delight. That, that would be oh my it. goodness, I don't even know what that is. And finally... You do. Sugar Hill you're, you're, I don't know what oh, that is. Oh, come on. And finally, Sporting Hero. Um, no, I'm, you've drawn me a, a blank that there are so many great uh, sporting legends. I'm, I'm going to find that hard to pick. Grant Shapps, thank you very much indeed for joining us. If you've missed any of this, you can watch it back on Global Player. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we have Nadine Zahawi joining us to go through the same experience that Grant has just gone through. Uh, it's 7.37 on LBC. Time for the news headlines with Amelia Cox. The Transport Secretary has told LBC he didn't resign last week when almost 60 other MPs did because of a sense of public duty. Grant Shapps says he did tell the Prime Minister in the fallout from the row over Chris Pincher to step down. A teenage boy has been sentenced for at least 13 years for the murder of 12-year-old Ava White in Liverpool. The 15-year-old, who can't be named because of his age, stabbed the